A mother proudly told her pastor, my teenage son has finally learned one Bible verse. It is Luke chapter 24, verse 41, Jesus, where Jesus asks his disciples, as we just heard in today's uh, reading, do you have anything here to eat? <laughs> you know, I don't want to lose any teenagers, you know. <laughs> This morning, I checked with one of the servers. He was a teenager. He said, Father, I love it, you know, please <laughs> share with the people. So at least they know, you know, Mom, I am hungry. Jesus was hungry, you know. I need something to eat now. A yes, Sunday school teacher asks, Now, Johnny, tell me frankly, do you say prayers before eating? Little Johnny replies, no, ma'am, I don't have to. My mom is a good cook. <laughs> That's not fair, you know. <laughs> you have to thank mom. So, my dear brothers and sisters, recently I visited our third graders, and they were studying parts of the mass. They were all excited to tell me what they are. Uh, they told me there are four parts of the mass, and they are introductory rites, you know, gathering him, procession, it ends with the opening prayer. And then second, liturgy of the word, first reading, psalm, second reading, hallelujah, gospel, homily, and then with the creed, we finish liturgy of the word. And then liturgy of the Eucharist with the offertory, up to communion, and then the concluding rites. So they were all excited to share, you know, the four parts of the Mass, and uh, the fourth graders are going to learn. They already invited me, you know, to be part of the Mass when they were going to learn. Uh, so four parts of the Mass, but then there are two principal parts of the Mass. They are liturgy of the Word and liturgy of the Eucharist. These two are called the principal parts of the Mass. I want to share with you today the second part of the Mass, the liturgy of the Word, or studying the Word of God, or reading the Bible. You know, three years back, Father Mike Smith, many of you might have followed Bible in a year. I did too. It's wonderful. And uh, Catechism of the Year. These are wonderful ways to read the Bible, listen to the Bible, and grow in love uh, with Jesus. The Bible is uh, God's love story. He tells all that God has done for the humanity. It also tells about Jesus' story. And it also talks about our story. If the disciples knew the scriptures, they would have understood Jesus' passion, death, resurrection story, and would have stayed away from fear. But Jesus must unpack and open their minds to the scriptures as we heard in the gospel. That is the reason, you know, we heard in the gospel, Jesus gave a lesson on the scriptures to his disciples. That's the reason I want to share with you the liturgy of the word today. The word of God is powerful. The word of God changed people's lives like St. Augustine, and it will change us if we prayerfully study it. I am very happy about the Bible study groups in our parish. I know four of them. So there are four Bible study groups in our parish. And there are many other small groups. They are all important because we want to know more about our faith. We want to grow deeper in our faith and in our relationship with Jesus. You know, if you want to get to know someone, you need to spend time. If you say you are busy, you know, then I am busy too. So you, you, you don't know how to, you know, you, don't, you can't learn about the other person. The more we spend time, the more we get to know, and then they grow in relationship. Same with Jesus. So, uh, Lectio Divino is an ancient practice of prayerful reading of the scriptures. It's a very wonderful way. Uh, I also taught about Lectio Divino to one of the groups at Mineral Point. It's a prayerful reading of the scriptures 
how we can, how God speaks to us. See, when we pray, we speak to God. When we read the Bible, God speaks to us. So if you want to know what God is telling you, please read the Bible. St. Jerome beautifully says, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. If we don't read the Bible, don't know the Bible, then we will not know who Christ is. Our gospel today takes us back to Easter Sunday. In the afternoon of Easter Sunday, Jesus appeared to two of his disciples, and they were walking away from Jerusalem, discouraged and depressed over Jesus' death. Jesus walked with them, talked to them about the scriptures, and when he broke bread with them, they recognized him. We see in this event the two principal parts of the Mass, liturgy of the word. Jesus was talking with them about the scriptures. And then he broke the bread celebrating the Mass. So liturgy of the word, liturgy of the Eucharist. Um, so even, you know, people wonder sometimes when non-Catholic Christians or some other denominations come to our church, they participate in the Mass. Uh, sometimes they wonder why these Catholics, you know, they stand, they sit, they kneel, you know, they sing, hallelujah, all these, you know, why they are doing, they could do one thing. <laughs> why we do? Because we are body and spirit. We want to worship God with the body and the spirit. You see, when the reading are read, you sit. When the gospel is read, you stand because Jesus is speaking. You kneel because Jesus is coming on the altar. Only to God we kneel down. And then we sing Gloria because that is the angel's song. When Jesus was born, the angels sang. So Jesus is going to come on the altar. We sing Glory to God, the angel's song. So when we know what is, uh, why we do what we do, we can fully participate. I was telling this morning, if you go to Packers game, you are in the Lambeau field, you don't sit idle. You like to participate, you know? You want to get up, shout, dance, and you know, make noise. Go pack, go pack, because you want to be part of the game. Same thing, we sit, we stand, we kneel, we sing, because we want to worship God with the body and the spirit. So the two disciples came running back to the upper room to tell the other disciples, as Jesus appeared to them there and offered peace because the disciples, after the death of their master, had been a frightened lot. He showed them his hands and feet. He said, he is not a ghost. He has flesh and bones. And he ate a piece of fish with them. All this to show that he is real. And not only that, when Luke wrote the gospel, there was a heresy, a false teaching called Gnosticism. So Gnosticism says, only through knowledge we can be saved. All matter, all body is evil. We don't say that. All that God created is good. Our body is good, you know. All things are good. After the each day that God created, he said, it is good. But the Gnostics say, all matter is evil. That's why they don't see, you know, Jesus rising from the dead. His incarnation, God becoming man, they don't accept because only through knowledge we can be saved. So Luke gives all the details. He's, you know, Jesus showing his hands and feet, his side, and then, you know, I am not a ghost. And then he ate a piece of baked fish to say that the body is good, you know, that he really rose from the dead. And then Jesus said to them, Everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. In other words, the entire Old Testament points to him, the Messiah. So Jesus gave a lesson on scriptures to his disciples. His role as a prophet is foretold in the book of Deuteronomy. His sufferings were prophesied in Psalm 22 and Isaiah 52:53. His resurrection is predicted in Psalm 16 and Isaiah 53. St. Augustine beautifully says, 
the New Testament is hidden in the Old Testament, and the Old Testament is revealed in the New Testament. We need both. We need the Old Testament, and then we need the New Testament. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer. They did not understand why Jesus had to suffer and die. And we question too, why Jesus had to suffer and die the way he did. He could have taken a number of other ways to save us. Jesus still bears the wounds, the marks of his sacrifice on the cross. He will bear them throughout all eternity. They are God's remarkable answer to the perennial question of human suffering. You know, human suffering, we all question. If God is good, why there is suffering in the world? And Jesus, by his own crucifixion and death on the cross, he answered, he gave the answer to the human suffering. He himself suffered, the innocent man. But when we unite our sufferings with him, he will give us the strength to overcome. So brothers and sisters, Jesus is risen, and let us be uh, risen Christ Christians, joyful to share the good news like St. Peter did in the first reading to all those who are around us. God bless you all. Amen.